all right what is up youtube so today i'm going to be showcasing a pk replay versus solomon greats now a lot of people are going to say like solomon greats is not really that good of a deck why are you showcasing this well there is a lot of good plays that i did uh to kind of mitigate my opponent's cards or i played around certain cards to where um i ultimately won the game spoiler alerts but I want you to learn from these replays. It doesn't matter if I'm going against a tier one deck, a tier two deck, or a rogue deck. You could still learn a lot from just these replays. So I'll be showcasing this replay. But before that, I want you to kind of look at my hand. My hand is not playable. The first thing you want to realize is you want to look at your hand and see if it's a good hand or not, or how you're going to do uh, your certain plays. Now, immediately when I see this hand, I turn my toggle off. The reason why I do that is because maxi is a card that's going to uh, trigger like the the animation to tell them that you have maxi in your hand now if you don't have really good reflexes obviously you probably want to keep your toggle on auto or on it doesn't matter but for me that has like really decent reflexes i can you know immediately turn on my toggle so that when i want to use maxi i can use maxi without telling my opponent that i have maxi but there's a lot of different things like that that you need to realize. Not even though in like IRL Yu-Gi-Oh, you need to realize how you're gonna use your hand traps, when are you gonna use your cards or anything like that. You don't wanna hesitate and be like, um, do I wanna do this? Unless it's like a really complicated line that just rarely comes up. If it's like a really simple line, you want to not hesitate on those type of things. So uh, immediately I turn off my toggle, I realize that I have to not show him that I have max. See, that is what I need to do. So he goes uh, standby phase, main phase. He's going to normal summon the Foxy. Now, I could have on the effect of Foxy or on the resolution of Foxy, I could max C. But if you look at my hand, my hand is not playable. I do not have two level threes to go into full PK combo. So I have to guarantee that my opponent special summons and I can draw a few cards so I can play next turn. Now, if I max C here and he ends up passing his turn because he might have a lot of hand traps, he might have trap cards, he might have a good hand to play next turn. And if I don't do anything or he has max C himself. So if I don't do anything or he doesn't do anything, I won't be able to do anything either if I don't get a good top deck. So that is why I do not max here. I want to guarantee that he is going to special him multiple times uh, so I can get the good amount of draw. So uh he resolves the foxy and he ends up revealing the gazelle that is really really good for him so now i know that he's guaranteed going to special summon more uh than once because he has the gazelle so he links off into bail links and now he's gonna go chain link one bail links uh chain link to gazelle i'm going to chain the max c obviously because this is a guaranteed draw and that will be very very good so I get the guarantee draw that is really, really strong. You always want to analyze your hand. As I said before, this is a really, really good spot to max C. So he is going to uh, use the effect, well, resolve the effect and add the field spell. And then he's going to use the effect of the gazelle to send the Salomon Great War. And now if you don't know what Roar does is that Roar sets itself on the field when he uh, links summons uh, again with his monster, which is Bay Lynx. And since I know he's gonna do that, I know I'm gonna get another draw off of Max C, uh, pretty much. So he's going to activate Desires, he's gonna banish 10. So th this is how I definitely know he's just going to uh, pass his turn on the Roar and you know either set a bunch of cards or have hand tracks in his hand. So he activated the Field Spell to relink into his Bay Link so he can set his Roar. And then he's going to, um, set, I think he sets three. Um, yeah, so he sets three pass and I know where the roar is the roar is in the middle So that is very important You need to not only pay attention to what your opponent's doing But you need to pay attention to the cards that they set like what order they set it in because that could be really important for like mind games Because if you realize a lot of people uh, when they set cards I'm not just talking about this situation in particular But when people set cards the best card is most likely going to be set uh, first because that's just mentally how we think um, so that's something you want to keep in mind as well But I do know that the roar is set in the middle because it sets itself from the graveyard to the field So I know it's in the middle. So that is what I'm going to keep in mind So now it's my turn. I have you know a playable hand now because I have the dangers in my hand also uh, The psychic wielder. So now my hand is playable. I'm pretty good right now I feel really good because 
PK can play through a lot of disruptions, as you can see here. So I draw into Torn Scales. Now, this is like the best top deck ever. Like this baits a lot of things. Like Torn Scales is very, very good as a card because it just does so many things uh, with just one card. But because it does so many things with one card, you can bait out so many disruptions with just this one card. So um, that is what I start my play. I start off my play with the Cosmic Cyclone, obviously, because I know the Roar is a very good trap card in that it will stop me uh, from resolving one of my effects or one of my uh, spawn trap cards. I want to get rid of that immediately because it's guaranteed that it's going to be a good Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, you don't always want to blind Cosmic Cyclone. You never... you almost never want to do that ever unless you're just going all in balls deep and you you kind of have a read on your opponent uh setting a certain card but again uh just just never like blind mst like that so i normal summon the uh the torn scales and that immediately uh lets him use the rage because he's like scared he's like oh my god he, he has torn scales torn scales is a really good card if he has a really bad hand maybe you know like like if i discard a trap card or a pk card and then send another pk card then that's just too much advantage and Solomon greats can't really deal with all of that uh interaction so uh he's going to hit the uh torn scales with the rage and then i'm going to activate the dangerous Suchinoko. he's going to chain max seed now here a lot of people are just gonna go all in they're gonna be like oh my god special summon, special summon, special summon, special, you know do all of that but my goal is to not really do that uh, you really want to uh, look at Maxi and say, what can I do when I get Maxi going first and going second? Now, in my profile, I said that if I was going first and my opponent activates Maxi, uh, one of my good plays is to go into the Bamboozling, which is a monster in a gate, and then set my Fog Blades or set any of my interruption and hopefully have like a Maxi or Ash Blossom or any other hand trap in my hand to kind of play next turn because PKs, they have a lot of gaps. So uh, immediately what I'm thinking here is that I need to make as less of special summons as possible, but also break through my opponent's board. So that is like one of the most important things you need to realize with something like Max C against uh, combo deck. So he has to Max C. Uh, I resolve the dangerous Suchinoko and it's going to hit itself into the graveyard. And then uh, it's going to use this effect to special summon. That's one special summon. I'm going to use the effect of Jackal up so I can get a draw. Because this is really important. I kind of wanted to draw into Maxi or any other like the good hand traps like Nibiru and, and stuff like that. So this is why I use Jacklope instead of using something like the uh, Psychic Wielder. So I can just draw into as many interruptions as possible without like committing to special summons. So uh, realize that again, you always want to keep in mind of the Maxi. So I draw into Maxi, which is like super good like that that why that is why i went for this play i wanted to draw max e so next turn i could put pressure on my opponent to kind of put them in an awkward situation so that next turn uh i don't have to deal with too much uh of my opponent's interruption and if they do go all in i have something like nib to kind of stop them because nib is very very powerful and against salaman greats so i go into uh the break sword and break sword is going to go into the battle phase and now you're already going to realize that, yes, I am about to go into Zeus. So um, a thing that could be really bad is if he has like uh, another way to like stop this summon, like a Solemn Strike, which I can't really play around. You can't really play around Solemn Strike. You have to special summon, obviously. Uh, so I was just like, if he has Solemn Strike, he has Solemn Strike. I'm just going to go for the uh, Break Sword and attack over his monster and then go into Zeus. Because uh, that's the only thing I can really do that doesn't commit into like a thousand, you know, special summons. So, um, my read is also, he already used the rage. So, I'm not really scared of rage or roar because I already got rid of the roar uh, and the uh, rage. So, now I'm just kind of scared of some strike. So, you also want to keep in mind that once you realize what your opponent might have, uh, you kind of want to play into how you want to deal with those kind of interruptions. So, uh, I go attack over his monster, and then I go into the downer, and then I go into the Zeus. And uh, after this, I'm going to wipe his board, and you're going to see that he actually doesn't have the uh, Solemn Strike. He bluffed a Pot of Desires, which is like pretty, pretty cool. Um, so it wasn't Solemn Strike, which is really, really good. So now I'm going to set the Fog Blade, and I'm going to pass my turn on this. 
Now, if you look at this board, this board is actually pretty, pretty decent. You have the uh, Arsenal Zeus. You have the uh, Maxi. You have the Fall Blade. And you have uh, some follow up with Torn Scales and Break Sword in the graveyard. Keep that in mind. That'll be important for later. So I'm going to set two and pass. And now I have a Zeus, a Fall Blade, and Maxi, as I said before. And now I'm feeling pretty good. Now, my opponent activates Circle in the main phase, I believe. Yeah, I, it, this is kind of weird. I feel like he didn't have his toggle on. Because, like, yeah, Droll might not hurt your hand. You probably want to, like, kind of just use, like, Circle in the standby phase. Or not the standby phase. The draw phase so you don't get hit by a potential uh, draw and lock bird. But I don't think it really matters. Maybe his hand is just not going to add any other cards. So he doesn't really care about that. So he activates Circle in the main phase, and then he's going to summon the, the Foxy, and this is where I maxi. Now, I maxi here because I don't care uh, if he special summons like a billion times, or if he passes his turn, because if he passes his turn, then I'm guaranteed going to win this game, because I have Zeus to wipe his board if he sets any cards. I have Wings and Fogblade in the graveyard to revive all of my monsters from the graveyard. And then I have my Torn Scales online for next turn. And then I'm going to be able to, like, you know, snowball into all of these different cards and, like, OTK him. So, instead of the, like, the previous turn where I maxied when I knew he had Gazelle, I maxied here because I don't really care if he passes his turn. So, that is the difference. But he has the Ash Blossom Joy Spring, which is, like, really, really scary right now because now uh he can potentially push through these interruptions and kind of otk so i'm in a really really tough spot here and he has a bunch of cards in his hand uh, from the maxi from the last turn so let's look at what he does he links into the bay links i think or the langaribo yes the langaribo this is one of the most scariest cards in this position uh the reason why that is is because he's going to be able to uh, negate the fog blade and fog blade is really really powerful and um that really gets rid of like one of my disruptions and if he could just get rid of the zeus then i have no more other disruptions and i'm basically gonna get otk because he has the will of the salaman great which is also going to give him um more monsters on the field which also the foxy in the graveyard the spinny that he added to his hand and i believe he has a gazelle in hand as well so that's just so many bodies on board and, and i think he also has a jack jaguar maybe uh maybe he sent it off a gazelle or something like that but um he just has so much fuel right now that he could potentially just otk me uh right in here so i'm very very scared so uh, i just have to use my interruptions very very carefully so he actually the effect to send the jaguar from his hands to the graveyard to some of the foxy and then he used the effect of the wheel to some of the gazelle gazelle is going to send the spinny he already has it in the hand but uh, at this point he's just dumping it in case it gets banished off of something like you know if i have a nibiru in hand or something like that but like or like zeus like if i zeus get rid of his uh spinny uh he can have something uh else in his graveyard for next turn so uh he used the effect of spinny in his uh graveyard to summon out the spinny and then i'm going to use the effect of zeus to wipe his board and then he's going to chain chalice now this is very 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 scary right here because right here um he just has no other like um interactions because he already normal summon he already special summoned the gazelle he already used the spinny all he has is like a jack jaguar in the graveyard and i'm not really scared of a potential wolf to add back like rage or war i have so much fuel in the graveyard also gonna have the zeus on the field that to where like i'm not really scared and i know that i'm not gonna get otk this turn but since he activated the chalice i am pretty scared and i could potentially get otk by this card um just activating so he chain link one uh chain link one the zeus chain link to the chalice that's gonna negate my zeus and i'm in a tough spot here he's going to go obviously if you know solomon greats he's going to go for the update jammer into the transcode talker into the axis code talker now i have to play this very 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 carefully if i can maneuver my cards in the right way i can potentially uh come back into this game because it looks like i'm going to get otk so he summons the access code and here this is very very important if you're playing against an access code you have to turn your toggle on if you do not turn your toggle on 
you're not going to be able to respond on resolution of the effect of access code talker and he's going to have priority to activate an effect which is access code talker to pop a card and you won't be able to respond because access code talker is such a broken card so um remember to always turn your toggle on once you see that access code talker so you can respond uh to the resolution of the effect so that is exactly what i do here um he used the effect uh, obviously before that to gain attack and also gain the effect to attack twice and now i'm going to use the effect of the wings to target my zeus now the reason why i do this is that i want to potentially bait him into uh negating this with the lane garibo because if he doesn't negate this with the lane garibo i'm basically gonna be able to wings bring back something uh and also protect my zeus from two, uh potentially uh one pop and then another pop is gonna be uh able to destroy it but that's gonna get rid of all of his disruptions and then at that point i'm gonna probably be able to survive this otk so um I also have a back row so now that i kind of scare him into like maybe thinking that this back row might be real and or not real and like you just kind of have to hope your opponent just like messes up or kind of gets scared and hesitates and all that other stuff so uh i think the wings hopefully he tries to negate this so i can potentially use the fog blade to negate his access code talker and that is exactly what he does he negates the uh, wings with the effect of the Link Rebo, and it's going to banish the wings. And now I'm freely going to be able to Fog Blade the Axis Code Talker, and now I'm going to be able to survive for a turn. So I activate the Fog Blade on the resolution so he doesn't use the Axis Code Talker. And then he's going to use the effect of the Axis Code Talker to banish itself. So that way uh, his effect can resolve because it's not on the field anymore so he can pop my zeus and now he's going to end uh his turn so right here is very very important now i have a wings in graveyard and i have uh the two uh pk monsters in my graveyard so uh, this is going to be a very important play obviously if you play pks a lot you would realize this play is like pretty standard but for those that are new to this deck you want to realize this is very important I summon the break sword in the uh in this zone it doesn't really matter but i summon also oh actually it, it does matter it does matter very very uh it's very very important but um let me pause it here so i special summon the break sword here and i summon the torn skills here now the reason why i do that is if i potentially go for a cherubini my cherubini will be pointing towards uh, a break sword or potential torn scale so if he has something that can destroy my cherubini i can obviously protect my cherubini from being destroyed so that's very very important you want to keep in mind that like this is like perfectly played out so i activate the effect of torn scales that's also a really good top deck by the way on um, the suchinoko so that's also a level three that i can potentially uh summon on the, to the field and i send the ancient cloak so pay attention to the summons so i've only summoned once right now and I know that my opponent potentially has a Nibiru. And now you want to kind of play around that. That's always you want to keep in mind what can your opponent possibly have. I know my opponent doesn't have Ash Blossom. I know my opponent doesn't have Maxi. I, I don't really care about any other of the hand traps because I can play through stuff like Imperm, Chalice, uh, Valor. All I'm caring about right now is Nibiru. Nibiru is the one card that can potentially bring him back into this game. So now I have to potentially play around Nibiru. So now I use the effect of the Ancient Cloaks to add the Silent Boots. And now here you want to realize, do you want to special summon the Silent Boots? The answer is no. You do not want to special summon the Silent Boots. If you special summon the Silent Boots, you're going to get Nibiru. This is the difference between playing around Nibiru and not playing around Nibiru. So I go into the Levier Sea Dragon. Now this is my uh, second summon, remember that. And now I use the effect of the Sea Dragon to summon back the Ancient Cloak, which now I have, look at this, three summons. And now I overlay both of the XYZs into the Utopic Future Dragon, and that's the fourth summon. And obviously, if you know this deck, you know that you're going to go into the Utopic Draco Future, which is my fifth summon so now i have i have fully played around nibiru because if he activates the nibiru 
um i can use the effect of the utopic future Dra uh, draco future and that would be like pretty much a gg no re at this point now i know that his back row is probably a bluff because it wasn't giving me any uh signs that he can activate the effect or unless he was like bluffing it or, or something but at, as i realized after this replay he did not have like a it was just like a bluff it wasn't really anything so now i'm just fully uh able to combo off and also i did realize that he had a nibiru i i'm pretty sure but he did tell me that uh he did have a nibiru because i'm playing against somebody uh from uh farfa's community so i i immediately like asked him like did you have nibiru did you have nibiru and he was like yeah he had nibiru so i confirmed a hundred percent that he had the the, the the nibiru and i played around it very very perfectly so he goes into, uh, or I go into the Cherubini, and at this point, I'm just in the driver's seat. I'm just like, I'm going through the motions, and at this point, my opponent scoops because he knows that I win the game. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy this replay. This was a gold replay. I, I know it was like, it's not that good of a replay, but I know he's like a good player, and this is like a very good, important replay to show you guys how to perfectly play around certain cards in uh, this match. Because you've seen that I played around not only Maxi, but I played around the, the Nibiru, the Nibiru as well. And it also baited him into activating a card so I can use my other card. So like, there's so many different things that you could learn from this replay that will make you a better PK player. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned a lot from this replay and I'll see you guys later. Peace.